In this lesson, we'll take a look at drawing a classic convertible sports car using a combination of colored pencils and alcohol-based markers. Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this lesson we're going to take a look at combining alcohol-based markers with colored pencils to create a wonderful drawing of a classic sports car convertible. Now in this lesson we're going to be using, like I said, a combination of alcohol-based markers and colored pencils and this combination of media is fantastic for creating detailed results. Of course alcohol-based markers, it's a little bit difficult to create details but with colored pencils it's very easy to create details. On the other hand, colored pencils take a while to cover large areas, but markers can cover large areas in a very short period of time. So we're gonna combine the best characteristics of each of these wonderful mediums together to create a wonderful drawing. Let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at the materials we'll be using. In this lesson, we'll be working on Canson marker paper. Now this paper is specifically designed for marker applications, but of course it can also accept colored pencil applications. I'll be using Prismacolor alcohol-based markers for this drawing. It's important that you use alcohol-based markers. Water-based markers are not going to behave the same way and you're not going to get the same results. For the details over the top of the alcohol-based marker applications, I'll be using Prismacolor Premier colored pencils. These soft wax-based colored pencils are excellent for creating solid applications of color and they're excellent for layering as well. We'll start here with a loose sketch on marker paper. And in this case, I used a light board to transfer the reference photo that I was working from onto the surface. Now, even with a light board transfer, you're gonna still need to go back and add additional details and make some alterations. So here I'm adding a few more details here before we begin with the marker and colored pencil applications. You don't have to be super accurate with all of these details since we're gonna be rendering them with the marker applications. And speaking of marker applications, we're now ready to start adding our first applications of color. And obviously this is a red car, so we're going to use a variety of different reds here to begin with. And we're also going to make sure that we leave open spaces for the highlights. Of course, this is incredibly important as well. So the first color we're adding here is poppy red. And you'll notice I'm going back over the top with an additional application of this same color in areas. What this is gonna do is basically intensify the color and make the value just slightly darker. You can see that we're doing this mainly in the areas where we see shadow underneath the front of the car and of course underneath the back of the car and along the side of the car as well. Now even in the highlighted areas, we do see a little bit of a transition of value. So we're seeing some areas that are a little bit lighter red. So for this, we're gonna use a bit of blush pink. And just as we need to add some lighter versions of our red, we also need to add some darker versions of our red as well. And for this, we're gonna add a bit of crimson red, which is slightly darker and uh, leans a little bit more towards a purer red when compared to our first color, the poppy red, which is a little bit more orangey. So of course we're going to address the areas where we see some clear uh, differences in values, some darker values, but we can also make some of these values a little bit darker using a variety of different grays. As you can see, we're doing some work here on the seat inside of the car, of course, after layering a bit of poppy red. In this case, we're using a bit of 70% warm gray to make these values nice and dark. We're also going to use 20% warm gray as well, and you can see that we've used this on the back side of uh, the seat, right behind the, the seat of the car, and also on the steering wheel. And then we're following this up with a bit of 50% French gray, which is a warmer gray as well. We'll go ahead and add a bit of color to the tailpipes here, which are actually on the side of the car. And for this, we're gonna add a bit of our warm gray 20%. And then we're gonna get to carry this color over to the front grille as well, just adding bits of color here. This is obviously a very light application. As I mentioned before, we're gonna continually darken the values throughout the process. We'll go ahead and add a bit of this gray to the headlights as well. There are a variety of colors here. You can see here that I'm adding a bit of blue as well. This is light cerulean blue. There are just a hint of a couple of colors here in the headlights. You can see we're adding a bit of yellow too. In this case, this is the color cream. 
It may seem strange that we're adding a bit of color here in the headlights, but if you look closely at reflective surfaces, you'll notice that they reflect the colors around them. And in this case, this consists of yellows and blues. We'll go ahead and start darkening up some of the shadows around each one of the wheels and underneath the car using a variety of grays here. We're going to be using both cool and warm grays here. And you can see a clear difference between the warm grays and the cool grays. At the moment, I'm adding a bit of 20% warm gray, but around the tires and just underneath the hood of the car, we used both 50% cool gray and also 70% cool gray. Now we're going to start darkening up the shadow underneath the car just a bit, and for this we're going to use a bit of 50% warm gray. We'll go ahead and take our 70% cool gray and go ahead and add in some of the shadowed shapes in between the logo and each one of the bars in the grill. And we'll go ahead and carry this over to the tire as well. We want our tires to have more of a cooler feel and the cast shadow underneath the car to have more of a warmer feel. So there's a bit of contrast there. We'll also go ahead and apply a second application over the top of the tire on the left side of the car here. And we'll also add an indication of the texture of the tire here, leaving open areas in between each one of the lines we're creating for the tread so that we can add highlights there later. You'll also notice that as we're making these darker applications on the tires, we are leaving open spaces for highlights around the outer edge of the tire as well. We've also gone ahead and filled in a bit of our 20% warm gray in the chrome areas on the inside portion of the wheel. And now we're making the shadow underneath the car a little bit darker. In this case, we're applying a bit of 70% warm gray. So you can see we're slowly making the darker values darker. We're not rushing to make these values darker. As you can see, we can layer applications just like we can with colored pencils with the markers to progressively broaden the range of value, of course, making the values darker in this case. We're going to go ahead and add a few more specks of some darker gray in the headlights and we'll switch back over to our 20% warm gray and we'll go ahead and give an indication of the window here. Of course a window is transparent but we know it's a window and we know it's there because of the highlights but of course to have highlights we do have to have some contrast so a little bit of gray added here makes a big difference and of course these strokes flow along the same form as the window here so they're a diagonal stroke going up to the right. We'll go ahead and fill in some darker values on the wheels. In this case, a bit of 50% warm gray is applied over the top of our 20% warm gray applications. Now, these spokes can be intimidating. We're going to tackle most of the details with uh, the spokes here with the colored pencil applications, but for right now, we're just getting some of those darker values in place. We can go back over the top again with the 20% warm gray, making the value slightly darker in areas. And now we've basically created an underpainting with our marker applications and we're ready to start defining some of the details and refining some of the colors here with colored pencil applications. We're going to start here with Poppy Red. Now, of course, this is a Prismacolor Premier colored pencil, so a lot of the colors match the same colors as we used with the markers. You can see here that once we get our initial applications with the Poppy Red in place, we can go over the top with a bit of white to pull out some of those highlights, and we can also make some of the shadows a little bit darker here. In this case, we're using a bit of Scarlet Lake for this. And of course, we can begin refining the details, like the contrast that we see around the edge of the headlights. Here, we're using 70% warm gray for this. And we'll also begin making some of the, the reds a little bit darker here as well. In this case, a bit of Crimson Lake is applied. We're going to continue with this process as we go throughout the car using basically the same colors here. So we're going to apply a bit of poppy red and then to make the values a little bit darker, Scarlet Lake. And then this is followed, of course, by Crimson Lake. And we'll continue using our grays here to make the values darker as well. Again, this is 70% warm gray. Of course, we see a variety of grays in this section. So next, we're going to apply a bit of 50% cool gray over the top in areas. This will create a more metallic look. We'll come back to this area later in the process, but for now, we'll continue working our way down the hood towards the end of the car. And of course, uh, we'll begin here with an application of poppy red. 
But before we get carried away working our way down the car, we're going to go ahead and add a bit of our 50% cool gray to the headlights. And you can see here strokes are pulled in a curvilinear pattern here to uh, add a little bit of contrast. Then it's down to the front right fender here, adding some highlights again with our white and then refining the reds around it or basically increasing the contrast, making that shine stand out a little bit more by alternating between our poppy red, our scarlet lake, and of course our white applications, making those highlights nice and strong. We'll add a few additional highlights on the left side of the car here, again with the white, and then we'll continue working our way to the back of the car. Again, that layering process includes adding a bit of poppy red first, which is basically our main color. We can make the values a little bit darker, of course, using Scarlet Lake, and then uh, make those highlights stand out a little bit more with a bit of white. One of the nice things about wax-based colored pencils is we can just apply colors over the top and it slightly affects the value. You're not going to be able to cover over the top of applications completely once you have some colored pencil material on the surface, but you can alter the value slightly, which is really nice. You can see here, now we're increasing the contrast on the headlight that's closest to the viewer, again using 70% warm gray to make those values dark. We'll go ahead and add a bit of color to the logo here with a bit of blue. More specifically, this is violet blue. And then it's back to the headlight again, increasing the contrast here with an additional gray. In this case, we're applying a bit of 70% French gray, which is a warmer gray that will uh, broaden the variety of grays that we're using here in both the headlights and throughout the drawing. After refining some of the headlights on the hood, on the upper edge of the hood, we'll continue working our way down the back side of the car. Again, this process is a slow process, but it's important to take your time and be patient here as we're applying the variety of reds that we've used throughout the process. And then of course, we're gonna go back and pull out some of those highlights with a heavy application of white. You'll notice that these highlights curve around the form of the left fender of the car. Of course, that's going to help to create the illusion of form, and it's also going to create the illusion of a shiny car, which is what we're after here. Now it's back making some of the values a little bit darker here. And as we make the values darker and make the values lighter, of course, we're increasing the contrast in the image. Of course, our goal is to create a full range of values, so we need to have the darkest darks and the lightest lights. And even with these colored pencil applications, for the most part, we're basically starting with middle values and then progressively pushing those values darker throughout the process. Here a bit of Tuscan red is applied to make some darker reds around this opening in the side of the car and also down along the side of the car as well. Now there is a little element right underneath the windshield here that uh, basically sticks up so it's creating some shadow here. So for this we're going to use a bit of 70% warm gray. And then to make our applications a little bit smoother we can use a colorless blender to do some blending. A colorless blender is basically a colored pencil without any pigment. So it allows us to use the waxy binder in the colored pencil to, uh, to basically smooth the transitions, which eradicate some of the tooth or texture of the paper from showing through. We'll go ahead and carefully define the edge of the door here with a 70% warm gray. We'll add a few specks of highlights here with some heavy applications using the white pencil. Now we'll address the seat inside of the car. Here again, we're going to start with poppy red. We'll add a few highlights with a bit of white. And then of course, we'll pull out some of the shadows and refine the details here with a bit of Tuscan red. Then after applying a bit of 20% warm gray to the area behind the seat, we'll go ahead and preserve some of the highlights on the windshield with a bit of white. 
We can also use this color to burnish the applications around the seat as well. You can see as this white is applied, it works the material into the tooth of the paper, making a smoother appearance. We'll go ahead and begin darkening up the shadows here with 70% warm gray. We'll also apply a bit of the 70% warm gray to the steering wheel as well. And of course the details start to slowly emerge. We'll go ahead and apply a bit of the colorless blender here to smooth the applications again. Even though this marker paper doesn't have a very heavy tooth, the tooth is still evident or the texture of the paper is still evident when we make colored pencil applications over the top. So using that colorless blender or, or white or a cream can really make those applications nice and smooth. We'll apply these same grays to the mirror in this case, uh, a bit of 70% warm gray really increases the contrast and brings out the details. And then we'll carefully define the outer contour of the window here with this same color. We need a bit of contrast between it and the background, of course, since we're going to be leaving the background white. We'll also add a few additional details behind the seat using the same color. And then we're ready to start addressing the tires and the shadow underneath. We're going to start here with a bit of dark umber. Now this might str seem strange here because dark umber is actually a dark brown, but we're going to create a more natural looking black in this area. So instead of using a black pencil, we're going to use a combination of the dark umber and indigo blue, which we're applying now, which will lead to a more natural looking black. Black tends to appear flat in an image and can make your image appear unnatural. So combining a dark brown and a dark blue leads to a more natural looking black. Here a bit of 70% warm gray is applied to the front edge of the tire. This will create a bit of contrast while still keeping the value nice and dark. And then we'll move on to the shadowed area just to the left of the tire here with a bit of the dark umber followed by indigo blue. Now, of course, this process is a little bit more labor intensive, but it allows you to control the temperature of the black that you create. If you want a warmer black, of course, you would add more of the dark umber. If you want a cooler black, you would add more of the indigo blue. So we'll continue applying this combination of colors around the inside portion of the wheel well here and also on the tires. We're also going to pull out a bit of gray here for the tread sections using a bit of putty beige. And then we can go back in with the indigo blue, adding just a hint of blue here and there because we want our tires to have, again, a cooler feel compared to the shadow underneath. Now before darkening the values on the outside portion of the tire, we'll go ahead and preserve some of the highlights with a bit of white. And then we'll begin applying our combination of dark umber and indigo blue to make the values nice and dark. And of course, we'll work around the highlights so that we create the illusion that we're after here. We'll also add a bit more of the putty beige here to make these whites a little bit more toned down and give them more of a natural appearance. And then we'll simply repeat this process for the rear tire. Again, we'll start with a bit of white to preserve the highlights and then a combination of dark umber and indigo blue to create a natural looking black. And then, of course, to make our highlights a little bit more realistic, we'll add a bit of putty beige. Now we'll move on to the tailpipes, again, which are on the side of the car. We'll start with an application of cool gray, 20%. And then we'll add some hints of shadow using 70% warm gray. Then, of course, we'll burnish these applications using a colorless blender to eradicate much of the texture produced by the texture of the paper. And 
After adding a couple of subtle details to the exhaust pipes using the 70% warm gray, we'll go ahead and increase the contrast by darkening the shadows around it using, again, our combination of dark umber and indigo blue. We'll go ahead and bring this shadow down all the way underneath the tailpipes as well. As you can see, these applications are made with heavy pressure since we're fairly confident about the locations and intensity of our shadows. Now we'll move on to the shadow right underneath the front part of the car. And here again, we'll apply a bit of dark umber initially. Then over the top, a bit of indigo blue. Now our shadows are starting to look nice and dark. Now that we have some contrast in place by our shadow, I see that I need to make some of the values on the side of the car a little bit darker. For this, I'm using a bit of Tuscan red. Now we're ready to tackle those wheels. Don't be intimidated here. We're going to insinuate the details rather than describe them completely. We're going to start here with an application of 20% cool gray, mainly to the outer edges of the wheel. Then we're going to switch over to our 70% warm gray. We're going to define some of the contrast that we see around the outer edges of the wheel. As you can see here, the pencil is very nice and sharp because we want to make sure that these lines are clearly defined. We'll also go on the inside portion here with the 70% warm gray and add a bit of contrast to the center hub. And then we're ready to start adding these spokes. We're just going to carefully work our way around the wheel, adding an indication of each one of these spokes. Rather than describe them completely, we don't have to draw every single one. We're only going to draw a few and then let our viewer fill in the information about the details. You may think that each one of these lines goes directly to the center of the wheel, but they don't. They actually connect at different locations around the outer edge and also in the center portion of the wheel. Now we'll go ahead and start creating additional contrast and of course creating some of those shadows in between. Again, continuing with our 70% warm gray. It's important, of course, to preserve some areas of lighter value. This contrast in this location is very, very important here. We've also used a bit of 50% warm gray in areas to create a little bit more variety in the grays. And also, again, our 70% warm gray is mainly used to make those darker values that we see. And speaking of darker values, we'll add a bit of shadow again on the inside portion of the outer rim of the wheel. And you can see how strong the texture here is. So we're going to go ahead and add a bit of our colorless blender over the top to make this application a little bit more smoother in appearance. To add even a little bit more variety in the grays, we're going to add a bit of 70% cool gray in areas as well. You can see that this is a darker gray, like our 70% warm gray, but it's slightly different. It's definitely a cooler gray. Now we'll repeat this process on the rear wheel here. And if we go back and look at the first wheel we just completed, you'll notice that there are some areas of white still peeking through. This is incredibly important. We want these wheels to look shiny. And of course, in order to create the illusion of a shiny reflective surface like we have here, we need to have that strong contrast between dark and light values. So of course, we'll use the same grays and the same approach on the rear wheel. And now we need to make some alterations to our logo on the front and the front grille. Um, the details are there, but they're not really very well defined. So we're going to go back with a variety of grays and also our combination of dark umber and indigo blue and just clean up this section. 
Now we're ready to address the remaining sections of our cast shadow underneath the car, and we want our shadow to be warmer here. We also want to replicate the texture of asphalt here. So we're going to start here with an application of 50% French gray. Then we're going to use the colorless blender to blend and smooth these applications. We're still going to see some of the texture, of course, produced by the texture of the paper showing through, which of course is going to give the illusion of the texture of the asphalt surface. Now as a finishing touch, we're going to strengthen up some of our highlights. Of course, we'll strengthen up the highlight on the emblem on the hood of the car and a couple of the highlights on the headlights. Now to make these highlights a little bit more noticeable, we'll pull out a few strokes and almost a star pattern. And now we're going to make some of the highlights even stronger using a material called gouache. Now gouache is opaque watercolor. And in this case, I'm using it straight out of the tube with no water added at all. Gouache goes right over the top of marker applications and, of course, colored pencil applications as well. It's an excellent medium for making really strong highlights, especially if you omitted them during the drawing process. Of course, I'm applying this gouache using a small watercolor brush. This is a nylon brush here, which will give me an added level of control since it is a small brush, but it's still stiff enough to make these applications. You can see here we can enhance any highlights that we wish. In this case, I'm enhancing the highlight on the front headlight. And again, just pulling out somewhat of a star pattern to make this highlight a little bit more noticeable. These highlights make a huge difference and, of course, make the body of the car look a bit more shiny. Now, of course, these strong highlights exist in various locations throughout the draw, and you can see we've added a bit of a stronger highlight on top of the door handle. And we also see several highlights around the bottom side of the mirror and the back end of the car as well. And after these final highlights have been added, our drawing of a convertible sports car using a combination of markers and colored pencils is now complete. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to pick up a couple of things here and there that you can apply to your own drawings. If you're new to the channel, I suggest that you subscribe. We cover a broad variety of drawing and painting mediums and subjects here. If you want to check out three of our course videos and eBooks, you can do so as well. I'll leave a link in the description below this video so you can go check those out. And if you want to check out our comprehensive membership program, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses, which includes videos and eBooks. We also have have weekly live lessons and our stored vault of recorded live lessons. There's weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute and also a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. You can check out our membership program. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below. Thanks again for watching and as always, I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.